Stay tuned now for Robert Young, starring in Father Knows Best, which follows this listening reminder. Tomorrow evening, there's more delightful comedy fun when you set your radio dial to NBC for The Bob Hope Show and The Phil Harris, Alice Faye Show. Bob's guest star tomorrow will be the lovely and talented Virginia Mayo. Together, they'll bring you a half hour loaded with laugh-provoking material, so be sure to listen to The Bob Hope Show. And then stay tuned for Phil Harris and Alice Faye as they bring you another mirth-quaking edition of their wonderful comedy show. Tomorrow, it's Bob Hope, Phil Harris, and Alice Faye on the NBC Radio Network. And now it's time for Father Knows Best on NBC. <laughs> now listen to Father Knows Best, transcribed starring Robert Young as Father. <laughs> Another half-hour visit with the folks in the white frame house on Maple Street. Sit back and enjoy life with the Andersons. Kathy, Bud, Betty, Margaret, and Jim, as the head of this typical American household, again sets out to prove that father knows best. Now, ordinarily, a Saturday morning at the White Frame House on Maple Street is the time when the Anderson family takes a change of pace from the week's work, and the tempo of life is generally relaxed and rather easygoing. And it might have been that way this Saturday morning if daughter Betty had not come in with what sounded like a harmless piece of news. Like this. Mother! Mother! We're in the den, Betty. Mother, guess what? I just came from Janie Liggett's, and guess what? Well, what's happened now? Princess, your mother and I are going over last month's bills. Don't tell us anything that costs money. Well, you remember me telling you about Janie's aunt, the rich one? That's what we need, a rich aunt. <laughs> oh, Father, please. All right, all right. Janie Liggett's aunt bought a mink coat. Well, good for her. <laughs> oh, it's full length Clear down to here It must have cost simply thousands Well, I suppose it would be nice To have a coat like that If the person could afford it Oh, it's so beautiful Father, why don't you buy Mother a mink coat? Why, sure <laughs> Next time you're downtown, honey Pick up two or three <laughs> Oh, Father, I'm in earnest I'm in debt <laughs> Princess, with this stack of bills piled up here It's not exactly the time to talk about buying a mink coat <laughs> Don't worry, dear I'm perfectly happy with the coat I have Of course But it seems to me that any man who cared at all about his wife Would at least think about buying her a mink coat Well, I've thought about it <laughs> But what happens when a woman gets a mink coat? I'd have to get all new dresses to wear with it Oh, fiddle And with new dresses and a mink coat Your mother couldn't be seen riding in our three-year-old car We'd have to get a new car <laughs> Oh, I give up Every time I make a sensible suggestion Father has to be a comedian <laughs> I'm going upstairs I love those sensible suggestions <laughs> Oh, I wonder what it would be like To have a mink coat in the closet for that matter, we already have fur in the house. There's that neck piece of yours that we bought in Chicago. And those fur mittens of mine. I can't for the life of me see why women feel that a coat made out of the skins of a bad-tempered member of the weasel family can suddenly create a whole new pattern of life. I didn't say that, dear. All I said was that... Mom! Hey, Mom! I'm in the den, bud. Oh, where were we on these bills? Where are you, Mom? Oh, Hi. Hello, bud. Hi, Dad. You home? <laughs> no, I'm down harvesting onions in Bermuda. <laughs> oh. Your mother and I are checking over some bills here, bud. What is it? Joe and I just decided something. Well, good. Now, uh, We're not going to take any more money from our folks anymore. Now, there's the brightest thought of the day. <laughs> what brings this on, bud? Nothing. We just decided. And a very good decision. Let's not question it. <laughs> well, the way it is, having an allowance, we can only spend so much and then we're broke. 
Yes, this I understand. But if we quit having an allowance and get jobs and earn our own money, then there's no limit to how much we can spend. Well, I'm not quite sure I follow your reasoning there. <laughs> but you go ahead. I'm all for it. I don't think you can earn all your money and go to school, bud. Sure I can. I, I, I already got a job at Snow's Drugstore two afternoons a week. I'm on the board. Switchboard? Sandwich board. <laughs> <laughs> you know, ham on wheat, hold the mustard, grind a cow and hold the weepers. Uh, <laughs> grind a cow and hold the weepers. Hamburger, no onions. <laughs> I know all that stuff, and I'll make enough to pay for everything except my lunches at school. Well, I'll give you enough for you. No, we're going to do this, Dad. I'm going to get another job, and that'll pay for my lunches. All right, if you say so. Guy's got to get used to paddling his own canoe. Hey. What is it, bud? Maybe I could save up enough to buy a canoe. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hungry. What's in the kitchen to eat? There's nothing out there. I looked. Hi, Mommy. Hi, Daddy. Hello, Angel. Hello, kitten. I need some clothes. <laughs> clothes? Uh-oh. We're back on the other side of the ledger. <laughs> you have plenty of clothes. But I need some I can trade. Patty Davis and I are starting a SWAT shop. SWAT shop? <laughs> Don't you mean swap shop? Yeah, where we trade clothes. Can I have some clothes to trade, Mommy? Well, look around in the attic, but don't take anything good. I'll just take some old stuff. Betty, answer the door, will you? Probably for you anyway. I'll get it. Now, where were we, dear? I've lost track. I don't know how you get well, anything hi, done Jean, around Maya. here. It isn't hi, easy, dear. What have you got in the... Oh, you brought it over! Mother, Mother, come here! What in the world did Janie bring over? It can't be anything less than Perry Como. <laughs> <laughs> look, Mother, look. Here it is. <gasps> Isn't it beautiful? It's Janie's aunt's mink coat. Hello, Mrs. Anderson, Mr. Anderson. Hello, Janie. Oh, dear. Say, that's a nice-looking coat, Janie. Nice-looking, he says. Nice-looking. Oh, Feel it, Mother. Just feel it. Mm. <laughs> Jim. Mm -hmm. I brought it over to ask you a favor, Betty. My aunt's out of town for the weekend, and she left the coat with us, and, and now we're all going away, and Mother doesn't want to leave the coat with nobody in the house. That is a problem. What you need is a coat sitter. <laughs> well, sort of. You see, my aunt paid over $3,000 for it. Would you mind if I left it here, Mr. Anderson? Oh, please, Father, please. Well, it's all right with me if there's room in the closet. <laughs> oh, you're sweet, Father. Put it on, Mrs. Anderson. Oh, oh, I don't think I should. Oh, go on, Mother. Let's see how you look in it. Uh, well, here, I'll hold it for you. Oh, Jim. <laughs> Careful, Margaret. <laughs> oh, you look simply divine, Mother. Isn't it terrific? Oh, you should put this on, Jim. <laughs> well, there's much point in it. Very few men are wearing mink coats these days. <laughs> Well, my father's waiting for me out in front. Thanks a lot for keeping the coat. We'll pick it up this afternoon. Oh, there's no hurry, Janie. Imagine three thousand dollars. You look great in it, honey. <laughs> I can imagine with this house dress. Oh, turn around, mother. Let's see it in the back. Oh, isn't it positively the most perfectly, excruciatingly, fantastically wonderful coat you've ever seen? <laughs> it's. Too lovely for words. Oh, real mink. I feel just like a queen. Hey, Mom, you better come out in the kitchen. The sink's plugged up. <laughs> well, that certainly turned my coach into a pumpkin. <laughs> 
what you're wearing a coat in the house for. <laughs> Bud, do you know what kind of a coat that is? Some kind of brown fur. <laughs> That's wild mink. Three thousand dollars worth. What? Oh, boy, a fur coat! <laughs> is that what it costs? Three thousand bucks? Three thousand dollars? I gotta go tell Patty Davis. I don't know if we should hang that in the front closet or not. That's an awful lot of money. I, I hope it's insured. You'd, uh, you'd better find a place to hide it, Betty. Well, don't worry. I'll find a place for it. Why? Guy could make dough raising minks. I wonder how you raise wild minks. Well, probably not easy. I guess when the mink starts thinking how much dough they're going to get for his hide, that's what makes them wild. <laughs> I, uh, wouldn't be at all surprised. Now, Bud, your mother and I were trying to get some... Oh. Um, it must be a conspiracy to keep us away from these bills. <sighs> hello. Oh, hello, Ed. Congratulations on what? Who told you that? Now, Ed, wait a minute. What's wrong, dear? I'm going over to Joe's. Yeah, but, Ed, I, I can't hear you with all that racket over there. No, I can't get away today. But I wish you'd explain what you're... All right. Goodbye. Why the furrowed brow? Ed Davis called me up to congratulate me. For what? On selling that $2 million insurance deal to the steel company. I haven't sold that policy yet, probably never will. I've been working on it for years. Well, what made him think you'd sold it? Search me. He had a bunch of fellows from the downtown businessmen's club over there. Wanted me to play golf with them this afternoon. Do you suppose he was... Ed doesn't drink. <laughs> if that's Ed calling back, I'm going to... Hello? Oh, yes, she's here. Just a moment. It's uh, for you, honey. Oh. Hello? Yes? Oh, yes. Mrs. Wynn Sheridan. I remember. Mrs. Wynn Sheridan? Uh, next Tuesday? Well, I... Oh, I'm terribly sorry, but I have a PTA meeting that afternoon. I... Why, yes, I'd love to. Well, well, thank you so much for calling. Goodbye. Did you say Wynn Sheridan? Now, how do you explain that? I met her just once a long time ago. Now she wants me to come to a bridge luncheon. He's the biggest automobile dealer in town. She's the social leader of Springfield. Why is she calling me all of a sudden? And so sweet on the phone, you'd think I was a member of the royal family. Ed Davis, and now this. Dear, there's no explanation for it, but all this seems to have started since that mink coat arrived. You're right. Something happened. There's a difference. Things are not the same. But why? It makes us feel like a couple of idiots. Exactly. But one thing we do know, honey, right now we're two of the most popular idiots in town. <laughs> Act two of Father Knows Best in just a moment. Folks are always trying to think of new ways to make money multiply. It'd be nice if you could just grow your own money, yet there is a way to make money grow through United States savings bonds. When you invest in United States savings bonds, you get back $4 for every three you invest. And savings bonds are one of your best investments because every dollar you lend Uncle Sam helps to ensure our freedom. And freedom for your country means personal security for you. Your savings bonds are more than a dollars and cents investment. They're an investment in a way of life. Show Uncle Sam you believe in him. He'll show you his gratitude with interest. Watch your money grow with United States savings bonds. <laughs> Well, has life been a little dull around your house? Not much happening? If you want to liven things up, take a tip from the Andersons. Have a friend of yours leave a mink coat in your closet. Ever since Betty's friend Janie brought her aunt's very expensive mink coat to the Andersons for safekeeping, Margaret and Jim have been flooded with invitations and favors from people who a few hours ago were almost total strangers. How do Jim and Margaret feel about all this? Well, they don't understand it. They like it. Oh, this is perfect, Jim. 
Next Friday, we're invited to the Carmichael's for dinner and the symphony afterward. When did that come? Just now, while you were out in the kitchen. Messenger brought it. Carmichael, I've met him. He owns the big music store downtown. Dear, I'll just have to buy a new dress to wear. Well, sure, go ahead. Possibly a pair of slippers. My gold ones are almost worn out. Well, uh, okay. I think it's simply too utterly exciting the way things are happening to you and Mother. What's the score so far? Well, nine invitations, two boxes of candy, and one electric rotisserie. Where'd the rotisserie come from? <laughs> A man brought it from the Acme Appliance Company. Insisted on leaving it for me to try out. No obligation and all that. Well, you see, Father, life is different when you have a mink coat. But we don't have a mink coat. We're just sitting with one. <laughs> anyway, it doesn't explain our sudden popularity. Well, why question it? Who's questioning it? Gee, I wish I could think of a real good place to hide the coat. Every place I put it, I ask myself, where would I look for a mink coat if I knew one was hidden? And that's always the place. Yes. Well... Uh, Jim... A car just drove in the driveway. Hmm? Look through the window here. Oh. Wow, who do we know who drives a car like that? You'd better go out and see who it is, dear. Oh, uh, I must have the wrong house. Oh, I didn't know they made cars that long. What a dream. Can't you picture yourself driving down the street in that? One person couldn't operate it. You'd have to have a crew. <laughs> the man seems to be arguing with Father about something. What in the world... The man's leaving, getting into another car. Here comes Father. We'll find out what it's all about. Jim, what oh, in the world... Oh, this is carrying it too far. We've got to do something about this. What's the matter? That Sultan's chariot out there. <laughs> Nothing I could say had the slightest effect. The fellow insisted that we take it. <gasps> oh, no. Really, Father? Drive it, he said. Try it out. <sighs> Keep it as long as you like. He wouldn't take no for an answer. Who sent it out? Somebody at the Wind Sheridan... Wynn Sheridan. And Mrs. Wynn Sheridan called me, remember? Margaret, the fog is beginning to lift. I think the light is beginning to filter through. Hey, who parked that gold-plated rocket ship in our driveway? <laughs> Wynn Sheridan belongs to the Downtown Businessmen's Club. He must have been over at Ed Davis's when Ed called to congratulate me on selling that fabulous policy that I didn't sell. Where did that millionaire's hot rod come from? <laughs> that bunch of businessmen flashed the word around town that we had hit the jackpot, rolling in money. But who told the businessmen? It must have been Ed Davis. Who told Ed Davis? Who owns the boss? Just listen, bud, and you'll get the whole thing. I've been listening, and I haven't got anything yet. <laughs> no one could have told Ed that I sold that policy. He must have jumped to the conclusion from... Wait a minute. Where is Kathy? Look no further, dear. The solution has arrived. You call me Daddy? Kitten, what did you tell Mr. Davis? I told him we had a mink coat at our house that it cost $3,000. Well, there you have it. That explains everything. Did I tell something I shouldn't have, Daddy? No, Kitten, you just didn't tell quite enough. Principally, that the $3,000 coat was not ours. Oh, yeah. Forgot that. <laughs> oh, I can't figure what you're talking about. I'm going down and see about a job. I'll go back and tell Mr. Davis. I got some clothes to trade with Patty anyway. Of all the silly things. What are you going to do with the car and all those things? Oh, we'll send them all back. Father, look out the window. <laughs> oh, for... Pete's sake, what are they bringing in now? You'd better open the door, dear. I tell you, there's never a dull moment with a mink coat around. What in the world are those men carrying? Yes? Mr. Anderson? Yes? Delivery from the Carmichael Music Company. Well, you'll have to take it back, my friend. There's been a little mistake. You, Mr. Anderson? Yes. No mistake. Bring it in, boys. But, but we didn't order anything from the Carmichael Music Company. I don't know anything about the orders. We just deliver. Where do you want this? Well, what is it? Combination radio, television, phonograph, and barbecue. <laughs> and high fidelity. The room isn't big enough for it. I don't make the rooms, miss. We just deliver. <laughs> well, you can't stand there holding it. Oh, you're so right. <laughs> You'd better put it down here in the living room. 
There you are. Why they send a thing like this out on free trial, I'll never know. You know how much this thing cost, Mr. Anderson? Well, no. Seventeen hundred and fifty bucks. That's without the charcoal. Seventeen <laughs> hundred? You must be loaded. Goodbye. Well, what do we do with it? Well, what can we do with it? Hook it up, play it. <laughs> we may as well enjoy all these things. They were forced on us. If they insist that we take a free trial, okay, we'll take it. Well, before I do anything else, I've got to find a place to put that coat. <clears throat> Imagine us with a new car a block long and a $1,700 radio. <laughs> oh, what can we do about it, honey? <laughs> the things are here. We're not out anything. Let's have fun. Oh, no, not again. Uh, look out the window, honey. If they're carrying something or driving something, we'll turn out the lights and hide. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, as far as I can see, it's just a man with a briefcase. Well, let him in. The worst we can get is a free trial on a briefcase. <laughs> Whatever it is, dear, just explain to him. Mm. Yes, sir, what can I do for you? Mr. Anderson? Yes? I'm from the tax collector's office. <laughs> uh, tax collector? May I come in? Why, uh, yes, yes. But thank you. Clausen is my name. Here's my card. Oh, well, uh, what, uh, uh, that is, uh... I was sent out to reappraise your personal property. Uh, well, uh, hey, come into the living room. Thank you. This is, uh, Mrs. Anderson, Mr. Clausen. How do you do? Uh, how do you do? Did I hear you say you were from the tax collector's office? That is correct. Our office understands there has been, shall we say, a considerable improvement in your financial status. <laughs> well, I, I'm afraid you made the trip out here for nothing, Mr. Clausen. The story about our financial improvements was just one of those rumors. Uh, no truth to it at all. Absolutely none. It all started with the silliest sort of mistake. Uh, that car in your driveway, it's new, isn't it? Yes, Worth, but... as it stands, about $6,000. Six thousand. The tax on that would be. Uh, no, 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 wait, wait. The, <laughs> that uh, that car isn't ours. Uh, they sent it out on approval. Well, it will be yours after you buy it. It's all the same to us. <laughs> but but we're not going to buy it. Then why did you have it sent out? We didn't have it sent out. Someone just drove a six thousand dollar car into your driveway and left it. That's just what happened. Mr. Anderson, you are pulling my leg. <laughs> no, I'm not. That's the truth. I've been with the tax office for 12 years, and I've heard a lot of stories. This one isn't bad. <laughs> now, let me get my papers out here and write this down. One super deluxe 10-passenger sedan, $6,000. But, Mr. Clausen... Oh, quite a radio phonograph combination you have there. Now, wait, hold on. It, I... That's new, isn't it? But it... It's not ours. Worth about $1,600, I should say. Uh, how, how did you make your money, Mr. Anderson? Oil? Look, I haven't made any money. The car and, and this radio, they were sent out to us. We knew nothing about it. Well, I would like to believe that, of course. Mr. Clausen, I'm fairly well respected in the community. I'm an honest man. I believe in being open and above board about everything. Oh, Father, I found a wonderful place to hide the mink coat. <laughs> Hide the mink coat? Oh, no. Betty. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know there was anyone here. Well, young lady, you spilled the beans. <laughs> now, let's quit playing games, Mr. Anderson. What do you have beside the mink coat? Any diamond necklaces? Mr. Clausen, believe me, the mink coat is not ours. Oh, come now, a man with your money. Betty, this is the tax man. Tell him. It's not our coat. We're just keeping it for a friend of mine while she's out of town. You know, there are times when I wish I had gone into another line of work. <laughs> <sighs> How much did you pay for the coat? We didn't pay for the coat. But you do have it? Yes. That's all I want to know. Now, if you'll just tell me how much you have... Uh, don't open the door. Well, we'd better see who it is, Father. Hi, Betty. Janie. Father, it's Janie. Oh, bless that girl. Come on in quick. Well, what's the matter? The tax collector's here. Janie, this is Mr. Clausen from the tax office. Will you please tell him? I'll go get the coat. Does this mink coat we're talking about belong to you, young lady? No, it belongs to my aunt. 
I'm Janie Liggett. If you come over to our house, my father will tell you. Here it is. Well, thanks a lot for keeping it for us, Mr. Anderson. Well, Dad's waiting. I gotta run by. Bye. Well, Mr. Clausen, are you convinced? On the coat, yes, but the car and it the radio... It all started with the coat. Our small daughter told the neighbors we had a $3,000 mink coat. And the word spread that Mr. Anderson had sold a big insurance policy. We were the most popular people in town. Oh, I think I understand now. <laughs> I have a small daughter myself. <laughs> you see, we're not rich, Mr. Clausen. In fact, sometimes it's hard to make the money stretch. Oh, I know just how it is. Just this morning, Mrs. Anderson and I were going over the bills. We're so far away from owning a car like that one out there, or this expensive radio. Oh, money doesn't go as far as it used to. Hey, Dad, Mom, I got a job. Now I can buy my lunch at school. <laughs> what? Uh, but uh, you'd better explain that. Hey, Mommy, I've been over at the swap shop. I got me some real good clothes. Hardly any holes at all. Now, uh, wait a minute, Kathy. Oh, Mr. Anderson. <laughs> what? Lunches. Old clothes. <laughs> I have kids of my own, you know. Here, let me give you five dollars to tide you over. <laughs> It's uh, not as bad as it looks, Mr. Clausen. Uh, you keep the five. Someday you may want to buy your wife a mink coat. <laughs> the Andersons will be back in just a moment. Friday evening brings more wonderful entertainment on the NBC radio network when Bob Hope presents his fun-filled show for your listening pleasure. Tomorrow evening, you'll hear Bob's guest star, Virginia Mayo, in a hilarious takeoff on a dramatic situation. Be sure to listen. And then stay tuned for music and mirth on the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show. It's a laugh riot from beginning to end when Phil teams with Elliot Lewis for another session of zany antics and hilarious situations. You'll hear songs by Phil and Alice Faye, too, for a really enjoyable half hour of stellar entertainment. Make NBC Radio your entertainment headquarters tomorrow night. Just set your dial to this station for the finest of all radio listening. Well, it's the end of a busy Saturday at the White Frame House on Maple Street. The mink coat has gone back to its owner and quiet again settles on the Anderson family. Children are in bed. Margaret and Jim are having their quiet talk. <sighs> what a day. Oh, it was a lively one. I never want to hear another telephone or another doorbell. <laughs> I'm glad you sent the car and the radio back this evening. Seems like we're back to normal now. <laughs> you know, I'm glad you're not crazy about mink coats. Oh, but I am. What? What? In fact, Wilson's department store is having a sale on mink tomorrow I'm going down uh, well, What are you going to buy? Some kitchen curtains Ah, <laughs> uh, you're a smart girl I'm not so sure if I am or not <laughs> Join us again next week when we'll be back with Father Knows Best, starring Robert Young as Jim Anderson. Father Knows Best is an NBC Radio Network production in cooperation with Cavalier Enterprises. In our cast were Helen Strom as Kathy, Gene Vanderpile, Rhoda Williams, Ted Donaldson, Mary Lee Robb, and Parley Bear. Father Knows Best, based on characters created by Ed James, is written by Paul West and Roswell Rogers, directed by Arthur Jacobson, and transcribed in Hollywood. This is Bill Foreman speaking. Tonight, play Truth or Consequences on the NBC Radio Network. Mm -hmm.